Well, hello everybody. Thanks for having me here today. And um, my name is Evaldo Oliveira. I'm a director of business development with Faircom Corporation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about a uh, new technology that we're, we're launching, which is called C3 Edge, um, designed for edge computing. And uh, this is a presentation that, in the middle of the presentation, we're trying to make it a little bit more interactive. So uh, we're going to have a live demo. I hope it's going to be very, quite interesting and we can be open for questions in the end, okay? So um, first, a little bit about what is edge computing, right? So what essentially is edge computing? Um, it's, a, it's a buzzword right now. There's so many people talking about edge computing. Um, we are involved in many different projects and the truth is that edge computing is something that's changing a lot. It's still, it's still trying to, tr customers and, and, uh, and vendors are trying to find exactly what they can do about edge computing, you can see a list of some examples of, of kind of applications we're working in. For example, hospitals, uh, smart hospitals are being built where um, systems are trying to detect which floors people are and detecting the context where this, this, uh, this, uh, this people are actually moving around. So why is this edge computing? This is a quite interesting area from, uh, from the computer science perspective. It's a completely different, different market that's being built on top of this because the idea here is that people are moving around, people are moving around uh, in, the, in the hospitals and if a doctor walks into, into a surgery room, um, his phone is gonna connect to the sensors in that surgery room and it's gonna detect that it's in a context of he's probably going to surgery. So the system can feed him with information that's relevant to that context. But if, if the same doctor walks into, into a hospital room, he's probably just, just checking out on some patient. So it's a completely different context. You can see that's a typical edge computing application because we're talking about sensors connecting to, to phones, uh, providing information from, uh, from the environment depending on when, where these people are. So the truth is in this case here, this, uh, this, uh, this project is, is, is using our technology and, uh, and it's designed to be running inside Android phones mostly. So the data is being persisted on Android phones. Uh, but there are many, many different applications. Uh, of course, industry is a big one. It's a big, a big market right now. Um, uh, it's, a, it's been a long time already that the industry uh, machines and PLCs are already producing digital data. So that's not really the, the big change here. What's going on now is that these machines are trying to connect this data to other systems within a company, right? So if you have a manufacturing floor or and you have like hundreds of machines producing data over there, this data right now is designed mostly to control the machines, not really to feed any kind of backend system like an ERP, for example, or a BI, or even a real-time analytical system. Uh, we, we have projects going on right now, for example, where they're adding artificial intelligence to these capabilities. What does that mean? Um, so machines are, are doing their, their job during the day and being controlled by the PLCs and by all other typical systems like the SCADA systems or the EMS. Um, however, you want to be able to, while this is happening, to learn what's going on. So to add an artificial intelligence capability on top of the system means essentially you have to extract data in real time uh, and process this data in real time and feed the system back. So again, why is this edge computing? because you have to collect the data by the edge when it's being produced. So there are many different ways to do this, but essentially you can see, like I, like I mentioned, many, many different types of projects here. Uh, and the truth is, these are all in pilot stages. Some of them are a little bit more advanced, um, but they're all dealing with the fact that this data has to be produced on the edge and has to be collected and processed on the edge. So uh, along this, the development of this market, we have seen that this, it shifted a little bit between the cloud versus, versus, versus the edge. Um, we are strong believers that they, these are both important technologies that need to be considered and need to be in place. So we're not, we're not proposing here to replace the cloud. Um, but I did notice like in the, in the beginning of this, like three or four years ago, when we started to look into some edge computing applications and some of the requirements that customers were bringing to us, uh, the cloud was pretty much the way to go. Right, so most of these customers were essentially thinking about the cloud only as the way to, to be. And the main reasons they, they listed were, well, the cloud is very flexible. I have enough data over there. I have enough space. I can always, uh, I have elasticity. So if I need to produce a lot of data, I can easily expand it and so on. Plus there was also, also this concept of, well, in the, ultimately what I want to do is to concentrate the data somewhere so I can process that information. Um, this is still all true, um, but it changed a little bit and it's changing more dramatically more lately um, because uh, there are many reasons where you don't want to go to the cloud to bring your data uh, 
upfront during the process. So I'm listing some of the some of the reasons here, like some benefits and pros and cons, and some of them are some of them are good things, some of them are bad things. Like for example, of course the cloud is completely off premise, while the edge is usually on premise. So you have computer systems running locally where your data is being produced versus somewhere else. I think this is more like a neutral point, really, on the cloud versus the edge. It really does not really matter a lot. But the next one is, a, is an important one. Like the cloud gives you very limited control of what you're going to do with your data. So the, what, what I mean here is that the fact that the data is sitting somewhere else and it's already there, you know, it's been sent over there, does not allow you to go there and decide exactly how to manipulate the data and what to do with the data. While when you are on the edge, you have full control of what data, when, and how this data is going to be processed or stored or persisted. So control here is critical, and it leads directly to some, another important one here, which is the latency, right? a little bit below here. So the cloud introduces latency for sure. So in the show, usually we have, we have a little demo showing a car running around and being controlled in real time. And it's a very, it's a very uh, small square, you know, that very big table where the car moves around a little robot We're controlled by an Arduino-like uh, board. And the car detects the border and then he has to move around so make sure he stays inside, inside uh, the square. And although it's a, it's a small environment, we measure that. And the car has only about 30 milliseconds to detect the edge and come back and move back and stay within, the, within its path. So when we switched over to a cloud mode, the cloud bumps everything, bumps latency to something along 100, 150 milliseconds. That's already too late for such, even for a, a very simple example like that. So latency, yes, latency is very critical here. And it's the main point where, like when you talk to uh, industrial environments, um, the concerns they have about having the cloud as the element to persist the data is really that when, once you go to the cloud, you lose control, right? You cannot count on the fact that when this data is going to be there, you know, can I, can I count that this data is going to be ready when I need it? No, you can't. So many of these projects on edge computing are considering uh, latency as a critical uh, factor here to be, to be taken in, uh, in, the, in their equation, right? Um, of course, and the benefit of the cloud is the scaling. Well, on the edge, you have very limited scaling capability. Usually, these machines or whatever you're collecting data from the sensors are in high number. So they we're talking about volumes here. But, but this means physically uh, scaling, not so much virtually scaling. The cloud gives you virtual scaling, right? Which is very convenient and very practical. So the projects we've been, we've been seeing, what happens is that uh, the, they are, they're taking advantage of both ends. They try to concentrate some data on the edge, but ultimately everything is, is going to be brought to the cloud somehow. So they take advantage of the scalability of the cloud without giving up on the benefits of being on the edge. Right? And I would like to highlight the last one here, which is kind of critical, really important, especially on IoT projects, which is privacy, privacy of the data. Um, the moment you, you transmit the data from the edge to the cloud, you are increasing the, the surface of attack. Um, so that really makes, makes your data more, more vulnerable. So if you are able to, comp to keep the data on the edge and process it locally on the edge without necessarily having to transmit it over to the cloud, you're reducing the surface of attack. So that is a very important thing to consider. Don't send everything to the cloud because maybe you don't need it and maybe you're risking too much once you do that. So, but anyways, like I mentioned in the beginning, what we believe is that these two technologies are really critical for, for what we call hybrid architectures. Right? And for edge specifically, yes, always consider the cloud as, uh, as a technology that you're going to have to live with and you're going to have to take advantage of it. But don't forget that you still have the edge to, to store and persist the data. So we're going to talk a little bit about this here and give us a few examples. So, so speaking specifically about our technology, why C3 Edge, right? So, well, Faircom is a company that we've been founded in 1979. And we are a database company, so our focus has always been on databases. Um, but not like a typical other database companies. What we do, our expertise is really on high performance transactional databases. So we have applications like payment systems, we have fund managements. So we do, we do what other databases us usually cannot do. Uh, and among those systems, we have always been involved with embedded systems, um, like POSs, for example, like uh, scanners, like cameras. Our database is, has always been uh, packaged as an SDK. So there is a development kit available for, for people to use it. And along our 40 years of existence, um, we have thousands of customers around the world. Many of them use our technology to control robots or control machines 
or run as a firmware inside some place. Um, I mentioned POSs, for example. We have customers using our database inside point of sales all around the world. Just take our database, embed it in their application, and deploy it as a firmware, for example. So we do have this DNA of embedded systems coming with us for a long time. And when edge computing came up and we started to look into what's going on with IoT, we thought that, well, I think there is room for us here with our technology to bring value to this market. So I list here a few of the reasons of what makes us different, right? And why C3 Edge is a database for, for edge computing. So uh, the very first one is platforms. Uh, edge computing, I mentioned edge computing is going in different directions right now, and it's still not very clear how the companies are going to take full advantage of that. So there are not many market standards. There are a few I'm going to mention a little bit here, like, for example, MQTT. Um, but still, platform, for example, it's still not very consolidated yet. Um, I can see some of those are coming up, like, for example, the ARM architecture. Um, but but uh, honestly, there's still a lot of different ways to, to handle edge computing. Some of those are, some of our customers are designing their own computers. Some customers are planning to use what's already in place, like, for example, Windows machines, very common in industrial environment. Um, but it's still being defined. What's important for us is that C3 Edge has been developed in NCC. So we support more than 20 different platforms. And for edge computing specifically, we develop those platforms that we already know. Like, for example, we support uh, Ubuntu Core. We support uh, Windows IoT. Uh, we support many different platforms. We support uh, Raspbian, for example, under the Raspberry family. Um, all kinds of flavors of Linux, which are very popular uh, for, for edge computing for sure. So platforms are really critical. Okay? So we make sure that our database is available for the, ma the majority of the platforms in IoT where people are developing edge computing applications. Um, second, um, performance. Uh, so having a fast database for us has always been our, this is our sweet spot. Our application handles, for example, I can mention some applications like some customers like Thomson Reuters. Um, they are doing right now uh, more than 100,000 data points per second, collecting data from stock exchanges all around the world. So that, those are the kinds of applications that the, the applications that we are used to work with. Um, for IoT, it's pretty clear that, uh, that we, there is a lot of data being produced. And this data is mostly time series data, so it's data points being produced per second. And I had some, some customers or some, some kinds, uh, I was talking to some analysts the other day, and he was telling me, well, a machine in an industrial environment produces a few data points per second, not thousands of data points per second. And he's right. You know, we've, been, we've been working with some projects with uh, manufacturing, and, uh, and it's true, the majority of the machines have something like 10 data points per second, 50 data points per second. If they are really fast, like hundreds of data points per second. But the truth is that on a, on a typical scenario for edge computing, we're not talking about a single machine. We're talking about hundreds of machines. So if you have a machine producing hundreds of data points per second, and you have hundreds of machines, we are already getting to the tens of thousands of data points per second. So if you are planning to use a database to persist this data somewhere, um, you better have a database that's able to deliver that, that kind of scalability, because you might have to grow a lot the amount of data that you're producing. Okay. So then the data types. Um, there are so many different data types out there. right? So we're talking about different types of sensors. We're talking about temperature. We're talking about geopositioning, for example. Um, Whatever database you're selecting to build your edge computing application, it better be able to handle different types, right? Different data types. And in a fast, easy way, so you don't have to go there and build all those complex structures to persist your data. Huh? Usually, the data that's produced by sensors or, or, or data that you want to feed back to control uh, for controllers, um, it's very simple data, but it's different data types. It has to be flexible. So that's also critical, and we handle that. Right? Now, the small footprint for volume distribution. Um, I actually put small footprint here, but I think a better, a better uh, reference here is about the resources that this database uses. So one of the pilot projects we're involved is in gas pump automation. Um, and you can imagine that a gas pump does not have a, a big machine, a big computer running over there. It does have a computer running there, controlling not only the sensors that the gas pump is, is actually using. And there's more than 140 sensors inside a gas pump. It's amazing. Um, but also the monitor to sell you, uh, to, to, pr to project ads while you're fueling, yeah. <laughs> while you're fueling your gas, the, the gas pump is smart enough to try to figure out what, what is the best ad to, to present to you. So that's a computer that's controlling information over there, while at the same time monitoring the, the gas pump uh, sensors. 
Well, this is really critical to make sure that the, this, this application needs to consume very little resources. Because of course, the, the priority here is to make sure the gas pump works, right? So it's not a problem if the, if the TV monitor is not working. It's not a problem if you don't see the ad, but it's definitely a problem if the sensor is not, is not triggered or if the gas pump is not working. So those computers have dedicated capabilities to be able to make sure that the critical process are being run. So if we decide, if, if a company decides to run an edge computing application, like in this case, this pilot project is designing a way to control this machine and persist the logs over there, but bring this information back to the IT department using real-time replication, um, you better make sure that this database is not intrusive, right? So we can run our database in a very small footprint, uh, and it's designed for, with that in mind, to make sure that everything is really, really small. Huh? And then, complexity to de develop the application. Uh, the demo we're gonna see in a minute here really shows how easy it is to interact with C3 Edge and start to persist and collect and persist data with us. We made a microservice layer, and we call it a, an IoT microservices layer, on top of our database that makes it absolutely simple for you. You barely have to write a single line of code to start to collect data and persist data from sensors with using uh, our interfaces. We have many different interfaces. We have our own API called Navigational API, which is how we are able to develop, to, to deploy the hundreds, of data the hundreds of thousands of data points per second. But we also have market standards, like for example, MQTT. Um, our database comes with an MQTT broker embedded inside the database that is used as a way for you to inter interact with your application and, and persist data with us. We have OPC UA and so on. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the APIs in a minute here. Okay? And finally, um, integration with other systems or applications. So this is essentially a NoSQL database that's running here, very close to what the market calls today as a key value store. However, slightly different. We can talk about that uh, after the presentation if you have any questions, but um, it's designed to be a NoSQL and used as a NoSQL database. However, um, along the years, we developed also a full SQL server on top of the same database. So we do have, uh, we, we can actually use our NoSQL navigational API to persist data really fast with our database, collect data from sensors, but at the same time, integrate this database with, uh, with a SQL environment, for example, BI, for example, or analytical system, because we map everything in real time to full SQL uh, uh, standards. So our SQL server database that runs on top of our NoSQL data uh, provides you the store procedures, triggers, and everything else. So this is with integration in mind, because we know that this data is not gonna be used only for control. The main point of this, of collecting this data and persistent data on the edge, is really to be able to integrate that with other environments, okay? So, in a nutshell, that's a little bit about what is C3 Edge. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more, dive deeper in, into each one of those. Um, but the main purpose is really to bridge the gap that we see today between uh, operational technology, or OT, and information technology, and IT. So they have different needs, essentially, right? So I, I tried to list some of, the, some of the capabilities, some of the needs that each, each side kind of has concerns. Like, for example, in, in operational technologies, we're talking about uh, write once, read many data. The point is this data never changes, right? If the sensor read the temperature one day, that's the temperature, okay? And that, and that uh, point in time, it's not gonna change. So you don't, you're not so concerned about updates and everything else as you are concerned about making sure to, that you can collect the data. Um, but there are like, for example, other in the, the, the case, if you go to IT, well, this is data that usually needs to be transformed. It's gonna be read for sure, but it's gonna also be written, you know? It's gonna be changed by people. It's gonna be used by other things. So this is a completely different requirement, right? It's definitely not a warm scenario here, okay? Um, IT is usually, the infrastructure inside IT is usually designed with batch process in mind, right? There are large processing collecting all the data during the night, you know, and have to have to run through all that data to crunch the data and extract information. BI tools do that a lot, you know, with the all app um, uh, structures that they have to build across the multiple tables and all the hypercubes that have to collect this information and try to try to extract uh, additional insights out of the data. These are big batch process running uh, uh, along along multiple hours. Um, well, OT is mostly online, right? It's mostly real time. Everything is happening now, and I have to be able to make a decision now. And in a few minutes later, that information is also not that important anymore. Um, because I'm more, I'm more concerned about what's happening in this next moment. So it's mostly a control scenario with online data. 
So all these different differences here, they kind of oppose each other. So it's very typical in those environments, especially in industrial environments, we have seen that a lot and we have experienced that in, in, in real scenarios. Like I can give you a very basic example. Um, we're talking to some customers where, for example, we cannot talk about the database here because database belongs to this realm. So if you say this is a database, you have to go and talk to IT. But they claim, well, but there is data here and we need to store and persist and manage this data. We need databases here. So there is all this fight between this data, who owns the data, right? So right now there is a gap here and we see that edge computing um, is coming to try to fill up this gap. It's almost like a new layer of data that's coming in between both environments. Those that produce the data on a daily basis and the state is being used to control things and those that have to process the data after the fact and use that data as intelligence, as a business intelligence, for example. Right? So C3 Edge sits right in the middle and gives you the ability to, to bring the data on both ends. You can use it in real time over here. You can handle thousands of data points per second, no problem. It's highly resilient, really critical because it has to be up and running by itself. These environments are usually environments that do not allow you to go there and interfere. Um, like for example, a DBA would be able to come over here and do some kind of update in the database in a planned way, for example. But on the other hand, you wanna be able to integrate this environment with your ERP. You wanna be able to have a centralized view of all your data um, in a place where you can go there and see the whole picture, not only a small um, uh, focus on some specific environment, you wanna see everything. So integration is really critical. We do it all, right? We give you all this ability to, to integrate both environments. So um, here's a quick picture of what our uh, database offers in terms of the APIs. And I had quickly mentioned, I'm gonna talk a little bit, in a, there's a slide later on the presentation here about our, our specific interface called navigational API or, or we like to call it nav API. It's our, our little nickname here. This has been developed by Faircom many, many years ago and it's, it's mainly focused for high, per, high performance really. Um, the idea you can see here, down here is the data uh, sitting in our database. And you can see that the nav API uh, is a straight way to go directly to the data. We have even some faster ways to do it, which is what we call the low level APIs. Um, we definitely recommend this is here is a much better environment to develop applications and you can see some of the, some of the uh, languages that we support. Um, but like I mentioned, this, you notice that these are all sitting on top of the same data here, the same data set. So, it's not either this or that. You can actually develop an application that is in inserting data in hundreds of data points per second here, or, or even uh, the tens of hundreds of data points per second here, thousands of data points per second. And while at the same time, you come from this side here and you have uh, SQL applications querying the same data that's being inserted over here. Remember, this is a transactional database, so everything here is under asset control. So we guarantee the transactions are being sustained from this side, while at the same time transactions are being run from this side as, as well. So you can run SQL queries here in a scalable mode, you know, and even if you want, you can actually integrate that with some, some of our high availability capabilities, like for example, real-time replication. So you can have a production high performance database running using Nav API while you have a replica to sustain all the SQL queries that you're gonna run in real time on a hot data that's being replicated over here. But in the end of the day, this is all running on top of the same data, okay? And C3 Edge is coming with additional APIs designed for IoT specifically. Huh? Like I mentioned before, MQTT, we're gonna see in the demo how this works, but we have also OPC UA, and also very important, we are, a partner, we are partners with uh, PTC, right? So PTC is a large vendor that provides a ton of different technologies for industrial automation. Um, they have an IoT uh, platform called ThingWorks. Um, we are what PTC calls a uh, ThingWorks Ready Partner, so officially partner. Um, it's a very interesting concept. They have like a marketplace where ThingWorks customers can go there and download apps and expand their ThingWorks IoT platform. We are one of those extensions. Uh, so if you go to the ThingWorks platform and check the marketplace, you're gonna see C3 Edge extension over there. So you can download that and install in your ThingWorks uh, environment. and immediately start to use our persistence as a way to integrate with your platform, okay? So, very interesting, and I'm gonna show it a little bit later here, okay? So, you can see a summary of all the, this information we talked about uh, ago here. I'm not gonna go into the details here, I would like to switch over to the demo really quick. 
We're going to dive deeper into each one of those here more specifically. A very important one here I would like to highlight is the fact I mentioned already, but it's, it's good to know again. We have a broker, an MQTT broker embedded inside our database, uh, which makes it really simple to develop applications for edge computing. And the examples you're going to see here are based on this interface. So it's really, really interesting to see what C3 Edge can do to make it easier for you to develop applications. Okay. So with that said, let's switch over to the demo really quick and let, if the demo gods are in our favor here, we're going to be able to see everything working. Okay. So hold on, let me switch over to the demo here. So switching over to our demo here, um, what you guys can see here on the screen is actually, uh, it's, it's a Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi I'm holding here on my hand right now. So we have C3 Edge IoT database running inside this Raspberry Pi. And let me show it really quick here, so just to can see how it's actually there. So here's the process of the database running. So C3 Edge, as I mentioned before, um, has been designed to support very many different platforms. This is specifically the package for the, for the Raspbian. Um, so this device here is, right now is simulating an Edge computer, computer where you would be running Edge applications. So let's see how you can interact with the database, with C3 Edge database using Edge applications. So switching over really quick to, uh, to another application that's also running inside the Raspberry Pi, um, it's called Node-RED. So let's just switch over here a minute. So switching over to the browser, um, you can see here, this is an application called Node-RED. Um, Node-RED is an environment, it's an open source uh, solution, uh, runs on top of Node.js. Um, it's quite interesting and it's being, becoming more and more popular for, for, to develop applications, especially on IoT. Uh, it's sponsored mostly by IBM. IBM uses Node-RED a lot inside within Watson. But for our case here, the main purpose is really to make it easier to show how an edge computing application could, be, could interact with our database, C3 Edge. So the same, sense, the same Raspberry Pi that you can see here in my hand has a sensor, uh, has a bunch of sensors in a, in a board called EnviroFAT. Um, it's quite nice. EnviroFAT has about, about like 10 or 12 different sensors. Let me show really quick here. You can see, like for example, here are some of the, some of the data that this board is producing. Like there's an RGB sensor, there's the light level, there's, it measures pressure and, and temperature has a gyroscope, so you can actually measure uh, motion and, and also a magnetometer. So this board here, we're using this board essentially to produce simulate data that's being produced by sensors. Um, and you can see there's a, a very complex flow here uh, processing the data. I think the main point I wanna show to you is how you can bring this data and use C3 Edge to persist it. So in this particular flow here, we're using one of our interfaces, the, the MQTT interface. So if you remember, I had mentioned to you that uh, C3 Edge has an MQTT broker embedded inside it. Um, as a matter of fact, everything, uh, the, the database, a SQL database, a NoSQL database, plus the MQTT broker is all running inside this Raspberry Pi. So right now, this board is producing data, as you saw a minute ago here, and we're flowing all this data and sending it to our database. So we can quickly take a peek at this, looking at the, at the MQTT client over here. So then you can see from the MQTT client here, that uh, uh, a lot of data is being produced. So you can see like this is, this is us connected to the, to the Raspberry Pi broker, to the C3 Edge MQTT broker, and messages are flowing over here. So the way, all you have to do to interact with our database is send us a message okay, on, a, on a particular topic that we're listening to. So I can give you an example, like for example, in this case here, let's look into this here. Here's an example of how, of a command that you can send to our database, turning on persistence on a particular uh, table. So the way this works is you send us an operation like persistence and you tell us, I want to turn on persistence. And then there's, there's many other variables that you can, you can play around. Um, most important here is the mapping between the messages that are coming through MQTT and tables within our database. So very simply, you can just tell us which, data, which table name you want us to create uh, and then map fields from the sensors into fields on the table list. So you can see here in this case, we want to collect data from, from the light sensors, like the RGB data plus the light level. Uh, and we want, we're telling C3 Edge IoT to persist all this data in a table called light sensors. To do that, C3 Edge will start to listen to a topic inside its own MQTT broker called light conditions. So from now, once we send this message to our database, um, we will, C3 Edge will do a lot of things automatically for you. So if this table does not exist, we're going to create it. Um, we're going to create it with the properties that you set over here. Like for example, I want timestamp, so we just have to turn on timestamp. I want this database, to, this table, to be replicated, so we can turn this on, and so on. Okay. 
um, plus the mapping between the messages you're going to send to us to persist the data from the sensors into the, into the table as, as fields. In this case, this table already exists, and, uh, but I, I'm just going to send the data over here. Let me show you how this works. And once we do this, the, table will spill, the data will start to persist. Let's take a quick look at that right now. To look at that, we're going to use our SQL interface. Let me switch over here. So now let's now I turn on persistence on, on that table for to persist the data from coming from uh, from the light sensor. So now let's take a look at the at the, how this database looks like. Okay, so you can see here on my screen this is this is what we call the Citrix SQL Explorer. Uh, as I had mentioned before, remember this is a database that has, is, is is a NoSQL database plus SQL. So we give you all the NoSQL interfaces to be able to persist data in ultra high speed, right? Millions of inserts per second. But if you want to query this data, you can actually use any of our SQL interfaces. So in this case here, we provide this tool, SQL Explorer. And you can see like we have several tables here. Let me reconnect here really quick. So here you go. We reconnect to the server. So here what I'm doing is reconnecting to, to C3 Edge IoT uh, database running on the Raspberry Pi. So it's the same IP address up here. And you can see there are, there are four tables already created over here. So if you remember the table we just created from the sending an MQTT message, through node red was the light sensors one. So if I click over here, you can see it's a table full of data. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. Lots of these things are being done automatically by C3, like I mentioned to you. Uh, C3 Edge does timestamp the data automatically and then inserts the data automatically. And we can run SQL queries just like any other SQL database. For example, if I want to count how many records are inserted on this database, you can see right now nothing is happening here, but uh, you can see 386,000 records uh, were inserted in the table. So that is how simple it is to actually create a, ta uh, create a table and start to persist data. So how do we turn on persistence on this table? Um, it's fairly simple. All we have to do is to turn on, turn on uh, send a message again through MQTT, and let me show you how that works. So if I switch over to, to, the, MQ to the node red over here, you can see that the way to persist the data here, this, in this case, we're collecting data from, from the board in VaraFed. All I have to do is to send a message to turn on persistence. It's right here. Let me show you really quick how this looks. It's the same as we, as we saw before, right? Just to remember, here's how it looks like. So if I send this message, C3 Edge will identify that this table already exists, and I can just turn it on over here. Send a message, and we start to persist. Um, let's go back and, and see it really quick on, on SQL Explorer. So coming back to the SQL Explorer, if we start to run counts here, now you can see that uh, the, the table is actually adding and increasing in terms of, of number of records. So it's that simple to start to collect data on C3 Edge. All you have to do is to send us a message okay, on MQTT. So that's one of the interfaces. There are many, many different ways to persist data using, you know, interact with our database. MQTT is a, very, it's a fairly easy one. Okay. We can do even more than that. Let me show you really quick, let's say, if you want to start to persist data on a different table, or if you want to look into a different, uh, collect some other, uh, other sensor data, let's take a quick look how to do that. So going back to MQTT over here, um, you can see from the, from, uh, from the MQTT message here, I already have like another example running right here, um, uh, light persistence on no partition. So let's, let's do a quick change here. Let's say you want to start to persist motion, motion X and motion Y. Um, and you want this to be stored in, a, in for example, gyroscope uh, table, for example, which is a completely, completely brand new table. And you want C3 Edge to start to collect data for the gyroscope table when listening to the topic gyro conditions. So just by doing this, um, with this simple change in my message, let me deploy this message over here. And now I send this message to C3 Edge. So switching over here, you can see that now there is a table called gyroscope table here which was just created, right, by our message on, the, on MQTT. And if I hit load here, or you can actually come over here, let's, let's type select count star from gyroscope table, and you can see that we are persisting data. So we can see records are being inserted over here. So that is how simple it is to interact with the database through MQTT. Right? And, and you saw here as well, that this is a full SQL Server database, like I mentioned before. So it's not only about running SQL queries, but also uh, having store procedures, for example, or building triggers, or and this is all running on the Raspberry Pi. So you can have you can have uh, your processes like a BI or real-time analytics or running some kind of complex machine learning process 
if it has to integrate through thing, through or through uh, ODBC or through SQL, you can talk directly to the database, even even running on the edge. Okay, um, this is this is one of the ways to interact with us, like I mentioned before. So now let's switch over to uh, to show how this can coexist with a hybrid architecture where there is a backend, like for example an IoT platform. In our case, we're talking about uh, ThingWorks as being the as being the IoT platform that we are certified right now as a, as a partner with PTC. Uh, let me show you how easy it is to interact with uh, with ThingWorks at the same time. So switching over here, you can see we have ThingWorks platform running in one of our servers internally. So ThingWorks is an IoT platform developed by PTC. Um, Faircom is a, we are a, what PTC calls calls a ThingWorks ready partner which means we are certified to, as a database on the edge to integrate with, uh, with the ThingWorks platform. So we have, we have two different methods to, to integrate with a platform like this. Um, ThingWorks provides one method which is through MQTT, as you can see over here. This is an extension that we have created um, and it's fairly simple to interact with extension. Um, MQTT is just like if you want to keep everything uniform and running through the uh, through MQTT across the network, like sensors producing MQTT messages, C3 Edge persisting through MQTT, uh, collecting MQTT messages, and then at the same time have a system like ThingWorks running the background in the back end. Um, you can also use MQTT to, to make the final connection. There are benefits, advantages, and disadvantages on doing different methods. Um, in this case here, MQTT is just a way to keep everything uniform. Um, you can see it connects immediately, and what we're doing here is we are connecting to both ThingWorks and C3 Edge are connecting to a, a cloud uh, broker. So what happens here is that C3 Edge running on the Raspberry Pi, you can send messages to C3 Edge and it's going to start to persist this message as data coming from sensors, but you can easily configure C3 Edge to operate as a proxy. So, or what people call a store and forward method. So we get a message on MQTT, we understand this message is, is, contains data from sensors to be persisted. We persist the data, insert records, timestamp, and do everything we automatically for you. But at the same time, we can also forward this message somewhere else. In this case, we're forwarding the message to a cloud broker where ThingWorks is also listening to. And then that's one of the methods to have objects like this uh, mapped into ThingWorks, bringing data directly from C3 Edge. We do it all for you. You don't have to worry about that. But, uh, but more recently, uh, with the announcement of C3 Edge version 2.0, um, we added an additional capability to integrate with ThingWorks. Uh, it's through a method called uh, uh, thing, uh, Always On. Um, ThingWorks developed their own edge, edge computing uh, protocol to connect things to the, to the backend platform. Um, it's faster, it's more reliable, it's, it's synchronous. MQTT, of course, is a messaging system, so it's asynchronous. With this method here, it's completely asynchronous, so you make sure everything happens in real time. So let's take a quick look on how that works. So you can see from here, this is, uh, this is the object that we, that we created, okay? So it's, uh, it's, it's an object, uh, we, um, we actually model that the object based on the, on the database. What we do is uh, creating an object representing something like a digital twin of the database. Uh, let me show you really quick how this looks like from the C3 Edge point of view. So switching back to the Raspberry Pi, you can see here we have a, we have a ThingWorks configuration uh, a document. It's a JSON document, fairly simple. All you have to do is to come over here and indicate which objects, well first, which server ThingWorks is running. Um, use the appropriate application key. This is a way to authenticate through the platform, through ThingWorks, it controls that, okay? And then you wanna create an object based on one of the templates that we provide. So this is all part of C3 Edge. So when you, when you install C3 Edge, we give you all these libraries and because we, uh, through our partnership with PTC, we have access to their, to their SDK, which gave us access to the always on protocol. So this brings several benefits for you if, you're, if you are using ThingWorks as an IoT platform. Um, first, you can immediately start to persist data on the edge through us, um, like you can combine MQTT with an integration through always on. And once you do that, we start to collect data for you, but at the same time, through here, we can immediately create objects for you where you don't have to worry about creating the models. So let's, let's see how this looks like from the, from the uh, ThingWorks platform. Let me switch back to the ThingWorks platform. So if you remember on the, on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi, we had an object called C3 Edge EnviroFAT. Here's the object. Okay? So you can see, um, we, can, we can come over here. See, this is the, the database uh, digital twin that we created. 
So I can click over here, you're gonna see that what this, this uh, object does for you is automatically scan the tables, the database for you that's running on the edge and show you the tables that are down there. So like for example, if I want the light sensors, I can just click on the light sensors and I'm gonna see all the, all the properties that the table light sensor has, like the RGB val uh, values or, or the light level. And all I have to do is to come over here and click sync uh, on each one of these parameters. When I click sync here, what we're doing is telling the ThingWorks platform that, hey, I want you to create a property for this thing that represents one of the fields. So we can quickly come over here and you're gonna see the property right there, okay? And you can see values over here. So we provide services for you to interact with that. So one of the ways to do this, to start to collect data immediately, is to, to, connect, to connect. So you connect the platform to C3 Edge. So we're gonna do this really quick here. So we provide services for, for all this for you to interact through ThingWorks to interact with our database. So first we have to, to bind the properties. So all I have to do here is to come to ThingWorks and say, hey, uh, bind this, bind those, the, that, that thing to the, to the digital twin. And now you can see here one of, the, one of the sensors that we checked over here is right now here changing data. So I, I'm just gonna turn on a, a flashlight over here because this is actually a, a, an RGB, but you can see it's changing the data there. So just when we switch over the, the light, you can see some of the, one of the variables is, is changing over there in, in life, right? So that's one of the examples, as you can see, how, how we can keep everything in sync for you. So the sensor is producing data here in the Raspberry Pi, then we're collecting data and persisting that under our own internal tables, which you can query using SQL if you want or integrate through any kind of SQL interface, JDBC, ODBC, ADL.NET, Python, and many others. And at the same time, you can tell our database, I want you to keep this in sync with a back end system like ThingWorks, for example which is an IoT platform. And then you can do that in many different ways. So this is quite interesting. The, uh, like I mentioned before, um, a lot of this is based on the concept of a digital twin. Um, we came up with an, with an interesting way here to show this. Let me see if I can, if I can show you like a, a real mashup on how this is uh, operating here. Let me come over here using the MQTT, making sure it's connected. Yes, it's connected. So now let's come over here to the, to the mashup. A mashup under a ThingWorks platform is, uh, is, is, is actually a way to, con to, to visualize and control the data. So you can see when I flip around my Raspberry Pi, it's flipping around there, it's reading in real time the gyroscope and detecting position and just showing like how it actually flips around. So that's kind of a re visual representation of, of what a digital twin would be in terms of how a database operating as a digital twin could help you to model your data. So before concluding our demo, let me switch over back here to the, to the node red. I wanna show you something else. Um, I mentioned to you, this database is designed to make it as simple as possible for you to develop an application to run on edge computing. So, but of course the database itself is aware that, uh, that the hardware where you're running this kind of application has limitations on resources. So there are many features to help you with that. And I forgot to show you one here that I think it's quite interesting. It's worth for us to look. It's what we call the smart purge, okay? So what is a smart purge? You can tell our database that you want it to, to never run out of space um, to keep deprecating data that's too old. So all you have to do when you create the table is tell us, like in this example here, uh, tell us what is the unit that you want to create this data. So in this case, I want you every minute to organize it in a different way. It works like partitions, like a data partition. We call it smart partitioning. Because here, for example, you're, we are telling C3 Edge, I want you to keep the data coming from, from, this, from this sensor here into the table called EnviroFed. I want you to keep like in separate minutes, but only for the last 10 minutes. So when, when we turn into the 11 minute, what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna start to deprecate the oldest one. So this is a great way for you to make sure that devices running on a Raspberry Pi like this one here will never run out of space, okay? Um, we control that for you and we are aware of that. If you combine this with our real-time replication, um, because this is a transactional database, never forget about that, transactions are critical here to, to guarantee resilience of the system if something crashes or something, you are able to come back. Um, we actually have real-time replication. So you can combine smart purging with real-time replication. What that means is that locally on the edge, you can have only the data that you need, like a time window of what you need, but combined with replication, you can send all this data to a central database, for example, in the cloud or in your data center, where you get all your data. So send all your data to the cloud where resources are unlimited, 
but locally persist only what's actually relevant to the process. Okay. So, uh, so this is a quick example here that we put together to demonstrate C3 Edge. Uh, let's go back to the presentation and let me, let me finish and, and dive a little bit deeper here and show you a little bit more details of all these features that you saw uh, operating here during the demo. All right, so that was the demo. So um, I, I hope you guys liked it. Actually, you could see like there are many of the features that we're, we're showing to you over there um, were kind of listed here of what we can do. Uh, and I think really important is the fact that like you can see it's running really exactly on the Raspberry Pi. Like so C3 Edge can be as small as a Raspberry Pi to run as, a, uh, as an Edge computing device, okay? But now let's, Let's look a little bit deeper here on how, what we do actually, right? So we glanced over the capabilities in the demo, but I think it would be really nice for us to take a little bit of a deeper look into all these features, which are, um, we really worked hard here to come up with things that we believe would help you with your edge computing applications. Um, this is just a summary. Uh, remember, the core database that's running in the, in the behind the scenes here, it's a database called C3As, very robust with a ton of different features. So these are the ones that we, we highlight for Edge Computing, but we encourage you to come to our website and check, the, check uh, actually the complete documentation out, okay? There are many other features to look into. So the very first one is the Nav API, which I think it's really important to highlight. This is Faircom's technology. Uh, we developed this many, many years ago, 40 years ago, and we've been evolving this interface since then. Um, designed for a quickly look up of a value in an index and really designed to handle hundreds of thousands, if not millions. We had some benchmarks running inside our laboratory. We're talking about tens of millions in search per second. Of course, in a very controlled environment, but we can handle that. So that's really critical. And we definitely believe it's important for IoT and edge computing, mainly because it's a NoSQL technology and because it's designed to, be, uh, to, be, to deliver performance, right? So in edge computing environments, limited resources, performance is really critical. So Nav API is one of, one of the things that comes with C3 Edge, right? Um, the second thing I mentioned to you, and you saw it running here in the Raspberry Pi, right? You remember, this was a Raspbian uh, environment, and uh, we do support multiple platforms. So with that, we did it on purpose. We are focused on that. So our, our technology, it's portable across platforms, so you can decide to run on Windows and then switch over to a Linux machine, for example. But way more than that, we support, we support Ubuntu Core, we support Yocto, we support Raspbian, we support Windows IoT, right? Windows IoT, so how many, how many here are using Windows IoT already? Yeah, so, yeah, not many, right? So there's always been a, um, I've, I've tried to find someone still using Windows IoT, it's quite an interesting concept, I think it's getting more popular with, uh, with Microsoft uh, in, uh, starting to work with Azure on the IoT, uh, but still not a lot, right? So you can see, like, but, a lot of these platforms are becoming more, more prevalent in, in edge computing environments, and we support all of them. Um, we're designed for the ARM family, but also with x86 in mind. And again, remember, this is for edge, right? That doesn't mean we do not support the traditional ones, like we support all flavors of AIX, we support all flavors of Unix, uh, Solaris, and different things. So you can think whatever platform you want, uh, uh, real-time oper operating systems like QNX or Wind River, we run on those as well. So, the thing here is really highlighting that besides the traditional ones, we also run on specific ones for IoT, right? So then um, we, we started to think about what kind of data edge computing applications usually do. So there is a ton of time series databases out there, right? So data, time series database is something that's very, has been, has been common since the 70s, I guess. Uh, but they're focused on, on the time series itself only, not really focused to bridge the gap between IT and OT. So there are very limited integration capabilities. We know, for example, a few of those have uh, limitations in terms of kind of data, like for example, can't persist uh, images. Um, so these are all precisely the kind of things that edge computing applications are dealing with. They wanna be able to collect not only the time series data from sensors, but also images coming from cameras and combine them and process them and bring this back to IT in, in a more sophisticated way than just a historian database. So we have historian capabilities like timestamp. Um, we added some aggregation capabilities so you can tell our database to automatically do the averages, for example, or, or calculate standard deviation automatically. So you have, we give you the ability to, to process and handle this data as a time series way. We're not a time series database. We don't have no intention to be a time series database. Uh, C3 Edge is really designed to give you the, the best of, of the, everything you need. 
time series is definitely one of them. From our perspective, every time you saw from the demo, when you insert a record, a record in C3 Edge, we timestamp that automatically for you. Uh, and it's configurable. If you don't want it to happen, you can tell us, I don't want to timestamp that. We want, okay? So fairly easy for, for you to, to adjust that through us. Um, but of course, we do know that sensors produce this data in a sequence of time, right? So yeah, it, there is time series data there. It's just that it's not only about time series. Right? The application development has been, you saw from the demo, uh, that everything that's running over there, you can do it by yourself, you know? You barely have to write a single line of code to get our database running on a Raspberry Pi and start to collect data from any kind of sensors. Uh, we, we didn't have the chance to show you like OPC UA, for example, I'm gonna talk a little bit about here, but, but I had a demo running recently where I just plugged this database, the same way it's here, into a PLC, collecting data from the machine. Siemens PLC, a Simatic PLC, and just persisted the data straight away. We showed it in two different ways. One way was using the native integration with the PLC, through uh, Profinet, uh, one of their protocols, and another way using MQTT, because the PLC is also able today to produce MQTT messages. So we can just fairly easily plug in hundreds of PLCs into one database and start to collect the data. So really design with that in mind to make it super simple for you to develop an edge computing application. So you can see here, this is the same example we saw a minute ago in the demo, but it's, that's it. All you have to do is to send us a message and we'll start to collect data for you. And you send us another message, we'll stop it. And you send it a different one, and we'll change the way we do, for example, doing a purge, turning on the smart purge to avoid uh, running out of space, well, like I mentioned during the demo. Okay? So that is a big concept of C3 Edge, to make it easy for you to develop edge computing applications. Okay? We do believe that uh, it's really a different layer that's coming in, and you can see here where it fits, okay? And, uh, that's why we, uh, with Edge, uh, C3 Edge 2.0, which is what we're talking about here, we also developed OPC UA integration capabilities because looking to a typical, this is a typical uh, pyramid of automation huh, for, for industrial environments. And you can see here that from, if I go, go back here, that's the, that's the traditional um, pyramid of automation. What we believe is that Edge is coming as a new layer right in between here. Okay? Between not so much getting to the, to the MES systems or to the ERP, not so low as the, as the PLC itself, so this environment stays untouched, this environment stays untouched, but there's a new layer in between here that will give you the ability to develop applications that sees one side controls the data coming from the machines, uses the data coming from the machines, the other side integrating with this backend environments, okay? So with OPC UA, we had some debates about developing OPC DEA or UA, um, OPC DEA is still the most common uh, protocol being used out there. We, we did notice that. We talked to customers. Yeah, it's true. Um, nobody likes OPC DEA. Oh, it's a big, it's, a, it's cumbersome. It's not easy. It doesn't work very well in terms of configuration, hard to maintain. Lots of these customers are considering moving to OPC UA. So we ended up thinking OPC UA is the best way to go just because that's kind of where the industry is moving towards. Um, but I can also see OPC UA and MQTT fighting against each other, you know, we have seen many, many projects, especially in industrial environments, where MQTT is the word. Well, everybody's talking about MQTT. OPC UA, yeah, we have it, we don't like it, you know. Yeah, maybe, but MQTT is really catching up very fast. So we have both of ways. It's really up to you to choose which one fits better your application, right? So this is the plugin I was talking about. Well, it's, it's open, so you can actually configure that to your own, to your own environment if you want. Uh, it's a binary protocol. There are two different ways to implement OPC UA. The binary is the best one. We did that one, okay? So, and I, I strongly encourage you to test it and try it, especially if you have an OPC UA server. You can see from the diagram here, what we have done is an OPC UA client, okay? So our database connects to an OPC UA server and collects data from that as a client, okay? So fairly simple, super easy to do and very interesting to, to just an easy way to start to collect data from an industrial environment, right? if you are already using OPC, for example. The integration with ThingWorks, the integration with ThingWorks is really critical. Uh, PTC is a great partner. We've been partners with them for, for uh, two years already, actually. Um, from the beginning, we, we had been talking to, when we started to conceive this product um, four years ago, we were talking to several analysts, some of them, especially Gartner, um, they liked a lot the idea of a database for edge computing and, and they also recommended us and telling us, hey, this makes a lot of sense. 
in large environments. So you definitely need to talk and partner with some, uh, some IoT platform vendor. So we went out there and started looking to, and PTC had just acquired ThingWorks. And ThingWorks is a great fit for us because it's very SDK oriented for application development. So their PTC was ready to respond, really quick response, really, they got excited, they helped us a lot. And really very fast, we had our extension published as a, as a ThingWorks extension under the platform. ThingWorks is really fantastic. You saw from the demo, it's really nice how it works. Um, and I'm gonna say it again because I'm not sure if the demo shows ThingWorks, I don't remember. I think it does, right? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. So ThingWorks is really fantastic. You saw it from the demo and uh, there, now we have, we, we first, last year, we announced one way to connect with, uh, with ThingWorks, which is MQTT connector, very traditional way, however, asynchronous. This year we did the native integration using uh, PTC's always on uh, protocol. We believe it's a much better way to go because it's live data update, it's synchronous, it's RPC, it's fast, and that's actually what you saw in the demo. Okay? So you can see this, is, this is, has just been announced with uh, version 2.0. So if you are using ThingWorks right now, and you can saw from the demo, a very interesting thing we decided here is that we, we build pretty much the digital twin of a database. So if you have an edge computing device, we can be the digital twin for that device represented by the data you're persisting. Okay? That's what actually happened uh, during the demo, right? So we do all the modeling for you, uh, what we call automatic data modeling here. Okay? Like I said, here's the connector. This is the one we saw, right? So we build all the data for you. Um, we, we do the modeling for you. This is all part of our database. So if you download our database from the website, you get all these packages all together. So um, I, definitely t I definitely encourage you to go with, uh, with the always on. If you wanna test this by yourself, use the always on integration. It's, it's simpler than actually the MQTT integration. If you are gonna try with the MQTT integration, remember you have also to download the MQTT component from ThingWorks, okay? We are an extension from that platform. This, it's all part of the documentation, but keep that in mind if you wanna try it, okay? Uh, so here's a picture just showing how, how this is, and we're gonna send this presentation to you guys later when we finish here. Uh, so you're gonna have access to all these slides here. But you can see here some examples of some uh, diagrams representing how the always on actually works. You can see there's an edge application talking directly to the thing works. What we did is we implemented our own integration of that always on protocol, but also persisting the data to our database over here, okay? So that's quite interesting. And I think always on protocol is really very powerful uh, ThingWorks did a very good job here with this, with this integration here, and we took advantage of that, really. Um, but there's also the MQTT option. The MQTT option is a little bit more decoupled, right? It's simpler because you're just dealing with brokers. Keep in mind, we have a broker, so if you wanna have, uh, ThingWorks requires a broker as well, if you wanna use MQTT. So you can actually point here, there is a, a third broker involved here, but you don't need it, actually. You could actually point everything to our own database if you want. So essentially, you could have just a full MQTT network communicating data across different, different environments and with us persisting it on the edge, right? So, um, so just to conclude, us, uh, conclude the presentation here really quick, um, yeah, hybrid architectures is the way to go. That's what we believe, right? So we definitely believe that edge computing is important. You're gonna have to persist data here and develop applications to run something faster, closer to your machines. Um, but at the same time, Keep in mind that there is, there is the, the, the back end as well. Um, we didn't have the chance to talk too much about this in the, in the, in the demo, but because we are a transactional database, this is a, the, you can have real-time replication. It's native available uh, with C3 Edge. What that means is that you can have a network of our databases running here, collecting data on the edge, and then pointing to replication. They can replicate in a hub-spoke mode like Everybody bring it to a central place, or you can actually replicate across them. Well, we are we're dealing with some, some projects where machines have to talk to other machines, and a database is a great way to go because we can do this communication as a data hub sitting this behind machines. Replication is a great way to go, okay? And if you combine that with our navigation API and our SQL interfaces, this, become a fantastic, this becomes a fantastic uh, hybrid architecture for you. Very powerful that you process all your edge computing the data and at the same time integrating that with the, with the IT environment, okay? So, quick picture, an X-ray of what the database looks like. You can see the Raspberry Pi here in the back. It's kind of this guy here, right? And, uh, but here are the platforms we support today. More are coming, okay? We're adding more platforms every time. 
some of our interfaces like the timestamp capabilities. I think it's just a, a quick summary of what the database looks like and it's, I think it's really nice to give like a quick understanding of how it works, okay? With our integrations, with communication protocols here for the sensor data that we're collecting, different integrations with the thing works on this side here. So that's a picture of version 2.0 of C3 Edge, right? Okay? I mentioned to you, this just came out. We just announced that uh, in June this year here for during the, the LiveWorks uh, show with uh, ThingWorks. This is in, in conjunction with, uh, with PTC. So like I said, we just announced this from uh, this in June this year during the LiveWorks uh, show with PTC. Um, um, a fantastic show actually, had a lot of, uh, lot of attention over there. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, again, my name is Evaldo Oliveira. Um, I'm with Faircom, so just feel free to contact me and thank you very much to, for having me here today.